Hey guys, right now I'm on the Enscape website. This is a program I've been hearing a lot about lately and I'm gonna download a 14 day free trial and try it out. I have no experience with this program. I do have experience with Twin Motion and Lumion. And so I just wanna see what this program is all about and give you a very general basic overview of what it is. And I made a list here of a few things that I'm gonna be taking a look at. So I'm gonna be looking at its uh, convenience, its ease of use practicality, user friendliness, and quality. So those five things, I'll let you know what I think about each and every one of them. And so I'm gonna download it really quickly and then I'll hop on Revit, which is where I'm gonna download it to. All right, so Enscape has been downloading. It was pretty easy to download, pretty quick install. And it doesn't really download a program that I saw on your desktop or anything, no shortcut. It just downloads it right here on Revit itself, like Twinmotion, like Lumion. So, so far, that's great. It was really easy to do. Um, let's talk about its convenience. Um, actually, before I talk about its convenience, what is Enscape? Um, I'm gonna try not to compare it to other programs. I'll try to compare it against itself and Revit, um, but I'll leave comparing it to Twinmotion and Lumion for another video some other time. I may bring up those programs, but uh, I'll, try and I'll try my best not to. So what Enscape is, it's not a program necessarily that's separate from Revit that you model or add objects separately. You do everything in Revit and then it uses a viewer, which is separate, to view what you've done on Revit in real time, uh, rendered, rendered real time. And then from there, you can go ahead and go back to Revit and render. And I know that sounds kind of weird and funky, and I feel like that too. I feel like it could take some getting used to. But anyway, let's talk about its convenience. So obviously it's very convenient because it adds a tab to your Revit program. Um, it's also very convenient because if you press this button right here, start, and you press continue evaluation, which is what I'm doing, you probably wouldn't have to deal with that if you purchase a program or if you're a student. Um, but you'll notice that it opens up a second uh, viewer. So this is gonna be my, my 3D real-time rendered viewer. And once it opens up, you'll see that there's my model already rendered and it's really, really easy to move around just like you would in a video game. You And it even shows you, you know, how it works here. You can even press M on your keyboard and it shows you like a, a little mini map that you can use to navigate around, you see? So that's, that's really great. I love that feature. So let me get rid of that map and let's go to the kitchen, which is where I'm gonna be working from uh, for the rest of this video. So as you can see, I've already been playing around with the program a little bit just to get uh, somewhat familiar so that I'm not a complete novice when I'm trying to show you this program. Um, but you see that th these objects have been imported from Enscape and I'll get into that in a bit. It's really convenient. You basically work on Revit. Everything you do on Revit will appear in uh, Enscape, which is great. And it makes it really convenient to work. You don't have to worry about doing one thing in Enscape and then doing another thing in Revit. Uh, like you might in some other programs, you just do everything in Revit and then you just view it in a real-time render on Enscape. So it's really convenient in that sense. It's also very convenient because if you wanna place an object, you go to Asset Library and it has already a huge collection of different objects that you can bring into your model. So let's say I wanna click these uh, stack of bowls. I'll just click it and in my Revit model, I don't have to place it in Enscape. It, see, it doesn't let me uh, change the offset. So what I'll do is I'll place it on the floor and then I'll change this offset to let's say two foot six off of the ground. And then I'll move it over to the top of the kitchen counter. And then let's see if, if, if I place it on the right place in section. Um, so it looks like it's actually not placed in the right place. So let's move it to three feet. And just like that, if I head over back to the viewer, that stack of bowls is now there. So it's pretty cool, it's rendered in real time. Um, my next point is ease of use. As you can see, it is pretty easy to use in the sense that if you're familiar with Revit, then you're gonna be really familiar with Enscape. And I assume that if you're using this for SketchUp or some of the other programs that um, Enscape is available for, it'll be the same. You just have to be really good at knowing the program, um, the base program, which in this case is Revit and Enscape will be pretty simple. You can see that there's not a lot of buttons that you have to choose from. There's a bunch of uh, visual settings here and that has to do with how the program looks or even how the render comes out at the end. And I'll get into that in just a moment. Um, you can do panoramas, you can do camera paths, so you can make videos, which I won't get into the video in this, <laughs> in this video, I won't get into making videos on Enscape, um, but it, it, is, it is an option that you can do. Um, so overall, it is very easy to use. 
Now, this program is also pretty practical. The reason I say it's practical is because you don't have to work outside of Revit and then go back and forth between two programs, modeling in Revit and then placing objects in uh, another program like you would in, in some other program options. But in Enscape, you actually just do everything in Revit. So that becomes really, really practical because you don't have to worry about syncing or anything. All you're syncing is what's going on here to this 3D view over here. That's all you're syncing. But you don't have to worry about placing objects here that won't show up in your Revit, which could get confusing and does get confusing sometimes when you, for example, place a toilet fixture in Revit and then you decide to find a, a better option on one of these other programs and then those two items clash because you forget to go back to Revit and delete it. So that's really not practical from some of, the, some of these other programs, but Enscape does it right, in my opinion. I think they do this right, so in that case, it is pretty practical. And so the next step would be talking about its user friendliness. Now, I don't think it's the most user friendly program on the planet. I don't think it's horrible, but I don't think it's super user friendly because for example, if you want to um, change the quality of a render, if I, if I press render here, you'll notice that there's no options to what the quality is gonna be. Which in my opinion, if this was a user-friendly program, there would be some options here asking me, how do you want this to look? Do you want this to look like a draft version or a high quality render? But it doesn't. Actually, you have to go to visual settings and then here you can mess around with the options. So in in, in my opinion, that starts to become uh, not user-friendly. Also, if you notice that in this viewer that I have here, there's no options to change anything. If you look at this down uh, here, letting you know what the controls are, it, that's all that there is. There's just controls on moving. There's a mini map. There's some sort of video editor, which looks like this. And that does not look very user friendly to me, like some of the other programs do. Um, so I'll press leave. And then you can change the time of day here, which is pretty cool, but that's it. Other than that, there's nothing else that you can do here. Anything else that you wanna do here, you actually have to go back into your visual settings and then change the image change the atmosphere, you see change the night sky brightness. So that starts to become very unuser friendly. And what they should have done in my opinion is place these visual settings within the 3D viewer itself. And that way you keep two things separately. You work on Revit to make the Revit model and then you work on the 3D viewer to do everything else. Th these options here, for example, camera path shouldn't exist in Revit in my opinion, they should exist on Enscape. But uh, so overall, I don't think it's it's super user friendly. It's not bad, but I don't think it's the best. And then finally, let's get to quality. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually really impressed with the quality of this viewer, for example. It looks nice. Uh, it's pretty comparable to some of the other programs out there. But um, I think that when you put people, the people actually look very, very nice. And I'm, I'm sorry if this is looking kind of dark. Let me open it up a little bit. But the, the quality of the people seems to look very nice. They look more realistic than some of the other programs that, that are out there. They actually look like images, like photographs of people. Like this is a 3D model, but it actually looks like a photograph of a chef. And so let's, let's render the scene here so we can uh, see what it looks like, the render quality of, of an actual image, a static image. So I minimize that. And to do that, I just simply go to render image and then you'll notice that these views um, have nothing to do with where I place the camera here, which in my opinion, that is that is a good thing in my opinion, because like I said, it, it keeps this separate from Revit. And that's why it's not as user friendly because things are separated in a weird way and, and they're not, it's not really the way that we're used to it with some of these programs, but it's okay. So keep in mind that whatever this is looking at, like if you're looking at here, that has nothing to do with what you're going to render on Revit. What you're going to render on Revit is what you've already pre-made uh, using your 3D view creator on Revit. So I'm going to click this kitchen and render that. It, let's give it a couple seconds, but overall I've noticed that it takes about 30 seconds. You're going to be pretty impressed with the quality of this uh, image, I think. And overall it takes about 20 to 30 seconds to do this. And here's that final rendering. Um, you'll see that obviously it could be better if I took my time to detail the ceiling and detail these shelves that are here. But overall, the quality is really nice. Just for example, look at this. If I zoom in a lot, it tends to get grainy. But again, that might have to do with some settings that I might have to alter in the uh, Revit plugin of Enscape. But overall, it looks beautiful. It looks super clean. It looks 
pretty much better than what you can do on Revit uh, and with minimal effort. This, this will be minimal effort. Using this program will actually replace you having to use Revit City, which is a huge plus on its own. And I think I have a 14 day trial, but I think that if you're a student, you get this program for free. So it's a no brainer. Try it out guys. And, and let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm planning on making another video soon comparing this program to Lumion and Twin Motion. So from there, we'll be able to decide which one is better for what kind of person, because in my opinion, I don't think there's one program that's better than another. I think some programs do some things better than others, but there's not one program that is 100 times better than the others. But it really depends on what type of person you are and how you like to work. So we're going to take a look at these three programs side by side and see which one will suit you the best. And just to end this video again, I think this program is really convenient. I think it's really easy to use. It took me probably like five minutes to start being able to use it. It took me uh, a, a few minutes to figure out that what if I want to change the color of the wall, you don't do it on Enscape, for example, or the material, you have to do it on Revit. So that might be kind of like a turnoff for some of you guys. For me, it's actually a big, big plus. I hate having to do that outside of Revit. I like to just focus on doing that on Revit. Um, it's really, really practical to use this program. Uh, it's not that user friendly, unfortunately, which is really one of the biggest negative uh, the, the, one of the biggest cons of this program, but overall look at the quality. It's worth it. In my opinion, it's worth a try. If you guys have been deciding whether or not to try it, I think it's worth a try. So again, let me know in the comments what you think. And for some of you guys that use other programs to render, um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what program you use. And then let me know if you think this is better than the program that you, that you use, or if yours is better and why. So I'll see you guys down in the comments. Have an awesome day.